All right guys, long time no see. I know it's been a while since we've done any videos at all. The reason for that is because I haven't really done anything on the cars for quite a while. Um, so if there's nothing going on on either of these cars, then I don't film any videos because there's nothing to film. So yeah, simple as that really. Um, basically the reason that there's been no stuff going on is because I kind of lost motivation with the 370 um, for a while because of a few issues. I got them sorted in the end and then over the last couple of months we have done a few things to the car. So. We're getting the wise fab kit on we're getting loads of stuff done there's also been a lot of stuff where it's like we don't really film what we're doing we just kind of explain afterwards so oh, this is what we did so yeah this is like a few months in the making and also not particularly interesting because we just didn't film a lot so sorry it's not gonna be the best video but i figured it's better than nothing so yeah we'll cut to like three months ago when Bryn was here giving me a hand and um, getting a few things done and then yeah we'll eventually come back to the current date when i'm going to be finishing a few things off so enjoy all right guys today me and Bryn is Bryn He's not happy about any of this me and Bryn are um working on the 370 well yesterday we started we made a list of all the things to do as you can probably tell from the list, we didn't get a lot done. Well, no, that's not fair, is it? We got a lot done. Everything is off. Everything is off, right? There's no subframe on the car. We took everything off the bottom. We took all the front knuckles and everything off. So we've got coilovers and knuckles and everything off because we're doing the wise fab angle kit. We're doing new coilovers. We're doing subframe bushings. We're doing solid diff bushings. We're doing hydro. We're doing loads of stuff. Um, so yeah, we've got all the all the shit off yesterday, which took a long time, a lot of hurdles, a lot of angle grinding. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen on the story, lots of, lots of shit that got cut off. Um, but yeah, so we did the solid diff bushings after I set fire to the old ones and drilled the old ones out for ages. Um, the subframe, look how rusty this fucking piece of shit is. Look at it. On a 2009 car. I mean, what do you mean? So yeah, anyway, cut that old bushing out, put the new solid one in, and just for you guys, I have put it in upside down to annoy people. Um, so yeah, we're, we're getting somewhere basically, and there's a lot of mess. Look at this. How much do you think we're going to get done today off the list? Loads. Loads. Bryn's confident. Yeah. Me, not so two much. Two minute job, two minute job, two minute job. Fucking that's your problem. <laughs> two minute jobs. <laughs> Throw it all on. Okay. Are we doing gay one stick? Mm. Yeah. Can you say gay these days? No. Okay, we'll edit that out. Oh, one thing to say as well is that we're probably not going to actually film that much of the actual work because we just want to get stuff done. But I thought I'd at least do a video for you guys so that you know what's going on with the car. I did paint the roll cage as well, you can see. Well, you can't see, but it's grey. There you go, grey. So we've had a lot of fun. <laughs> you made it worse. We've had a lot of fun getting these uh, subframe solid bush insert things in because they don't really go in. <laughs> That's the long and short of it. We're pretty much done with this job though, thankfully. I was going to get the subframe powder coated or something, but I don't think we're going to bother now because we want to get it all back on so we can do the wise fab stuff on the rear. And yeah, it'll just be very time consuming if we delay that. So we're going to crack on with putting this back on the car and then get the diff back on and then do wise fab. Right, so we got the subframe back on, and you can't see at the moment. Um, and then we are starting on the rear wise fab stuff. Now, as you can see, this says 350Z, even though we're putting it on the 370, because the 370Z wise fab rear is the same knuckle but different arms. So, there you go. You're learning stuff. How's it going, Bryn? They wrap this really Yeah, they really wrap this shit tight. But yeah, we've also started on the hydro setup, um, which is this mess back here at the moment. This is still all masked off from when I was painting stuff. But um, basically, we just drilled a hole where the bulkhead fitting is going to go through. That is then going to drop down um, and have a T-piece go into each caliper, because we're doing dual calipers, because the wise fab stuff has extra mounting points for dual calipers. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much, pretty much all we've done so far. Again. Only two jobs ticked off out of 50 so far, but we're getting there. We're doing, we're on with gay one stick and rear wise fab or fies wab as some comedian has written there. Was that you? Right, it's all unpacked now, the wise fab stuff. Uh, it does actually say 370Z somewhere as well on this, which we just discovered. Um, and we're now putting the case bought coilovers on, but what we've, what we've just noticed when we've unpacked them is that this little booklet, which has like a tamper proof seal on the side of it, you have to cut open. Very fancy, very nice bit of card. It's all just for some stickers. <laughs> and one of them's like 3D. Like, that is the most over the top thing I've ever seen. Like, it's crazy. It's too fancy. It's like they've tried to go like Apple and iPhone with it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Bit much. Like, good, like 10 out of 10 for effort, but just a bit much. <laughs> so we've got the wise fab rear on, just about. There's a proper fuck about getting some of these arms on. 
but we've just about got them on now. Yeah, one side was really awkward, this side was alright. Um, we've got coilovers in, they're not set to any specific ride height or anything yet, so there'll be more stuff to do with them. But yeah, it's, um, it's going okay. I mean, we're nearly like, it's like what, five o'clock or something? We're nearly like out of time. <laughs> so, we're not getting as much done as we'd hoped, but that is always the way with working on cars. Especially new stuff that you've not done before, like neither of us have put any of this shit in before. And they actually change like the location of some of the mounting points and stuff on the knuckle compared to the stock one, so it's all it's all a bit different. Uh, we've still got to put the brake caliper on, we've got some new brake discs somewhere. Where are they? There they are. New brake discs to go on, on the front and the rear, which I think I'll just do while we're doing all this. Uh, and then we've got the dual caliper set up as well. We've got two more of these stock calipers. We've got to make all the brake lines for them. So that's what we're gonna carry on with now. Right, we've got the hydro bulkhead fitting in and the T-piece underneath. We've also just done the polycarb windows. You can't really see because they're so clean at the moment. You can barely see them, but we've done them. And we're now doing the Weissfab angle kit on the front. Now that's gonna be about it. We're kind of tight for time now. Okay, so we've got the knuckle on now, but we have a bit of a problem in that the coilover, you can't really see on this side very well because the uh, knuckle is weighing it down. Let me go show you on the other side quickly. We've not got the knuckle on yet. And the coilover is way too small. Like, look how much of a gap there is there. Um, they do supply you with like a little washer that was like sellotaped to this. Um, just a little space of it. It's nowhere near big enough to fill that gap. Um, so we're not really sure what to do here. It's the same with the stock coilovers. It's not just like these case belt ones are weird or something. Stock ones um, look the same width as this. And the BC coilovers that I've got that I still need to send back, um, they're the same width as this. So like any coilover would be the same. So we're not really sure what the crack is with that. Um, Bryn has had to go home now because it's like 10 o'clock at night. He's been here all weekend. And it was a big thank you to him as always for coming to help. I think he's a bit disappointed that we got stuck on stuff, but I was kind of half expecting it with a new angle kit that neither of us have ever installed and all the rust and all the shit on this car. So yeah, it's not gone particularly smoothly. Uh, other issues with the angle kit, when these offset rack spacers are on, I know everyone hates offset rack spacers, but it's what we're going to be running for now until we relocate the rack. When they're on, um, there's only one position that they're really going, or there's two, there's that position or 180 degrees the other way, which is even worse. And obviously the whole point of these is to move the um, tie rod forward, so it's got to go this way. Um, I don't know if you can see in there, but it will hit the subframe, basically. Long story short, when the rack goes back in, it will hit this part of the subframe here that you can see, this round part. So we're assuming you've got to grind some of that back, but it doesn't mention that anywhere in the instructions or anything. I mean, I say instructions, there's not a lot in the way of instructions. This is, uh, that's it. That's all you get. So good luck, have fun. Bit of a bit of a pain trying to install something like this without any kind of guidance really, but yeah. Um, that's pretty much it. They're pretty much the showstoppers in terms of issues. There was another one, I can't remember. There's some other problem, I don't know. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at at the moment. Like I say, Bryn has gone now, but I will carry on filming some stuff when I do a few more bits. Um, I've got a load of bolts that I need to replace uh, because some of them were so rusty that they just we either had to cut them off, some of them that were like in really awkward places and we couldn't get out or were rusted too much. We either cut them off or um, some of them we just couldn't clean up enough once we got them off, they just were so bad. And um, we also damaged one of the brake lines, I think, and one of the ABS sensors. So, you know, it's, uh, it's been a good time. It's been a good time all around. And yeah, that's kind of where we're at. We've not tightened all this stuff up yet because I'm waiting to get new bolts for bits like I just mentioned. Um, at least we did get subframe bushes in. Again, this is not all tightened up and talked up yet, but um, we had to cut this brace off. I haven't finished cutting this off, but this was so rusty that we had to cut bits off. Um, but these bits kind of cap the um, the bush, so we've just cut that there and put these back on, which looks a bit stupid at the moment. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll make a better version of that at some point myself. So yeah, that is where we're at for now. Like I say, I will resume this video in uh, a few days' time when I've got a few more bolts and bits and spoken to Wisefab about what we're supposed to do, and uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. Okay, so I said at the end of that last clip that you saw that I oh, will be back like in the next few days or whatever to finish this and carry on, and that was two months ago. So I've literally not done a lot for the last two months on this car. But the last couple of weeks, Phil has been down from Lincoln to give me a hand, and we've got a few things done. I'll show you what we've done and the situation that we're in at the moment. So as you can tell from this mess, <laughs> this is where we're at at the moment. Uh, we've struggled to even get wheels on at all. We had to go from the 19 inch down to the 18 inch wheels um, just to get them to even fit at all. And this is after raising the coilovers loads, but I'm gonna raise them some more now because when I lower this down, in fact, I'll show you. So the lift hasn't bottomed out yet. We haven't got off the lift yet, but 
yeah, we're hitting stuff. So we're going to uh, extend the coilovers a bit more, raise it up a little bit more, and then see where we sit. Okay, so I've raised it up some more. As you can see, we are very, very raised now. I've got all that thread. There can't be that much thread left in the bottom. I need to actually unscrew it all and check. Make sure there is enough thread still in the base of the coilover because it's dangerous if it's too short. But yeah, um, round it up a bit more, as you can tell. And now when it's on the ground, it does actually have just enough clearance in the arch to be able to like roll it around the workshop and stuff. And this is a full lock at the moment. So as you can see, we get quite a bit of lock. Um, especially if you come over this side, you can kind of see even better. It's kind of kind of ridiculous, but yeah, I don't know whether we'll actually be running that much lock because you can adjust the lock stops here. Um, so I don't know if I'll change that to be somewhere sort of more in the middle because obviously I'm used to drifting that, which has absolutely zero lock. It's just literally got rack spaces. So yeah, um, any extra lock is going to seem like quite a lot to me in this. And we will be putting an angle kit on that as well. It's not wise fab; it is the GK Tech thing over there you can't see it but GK Tech angle kit is a bit simpler a bit easier that's gonna be going on that next which is kind of why I need to get stuff done on this just so we can get it out of the way and get it off the lift so I can actually do stuff on that before BDC season starts again in like six weeks or something stupidly short so this is where we're at at the moment with this um, I've got the subframe ground out didn't do a very tidy job of it as you can see but it's ground out so that this offset rack spacer doesn't hit it as it goes back past uh, the thing that we mentioned before with the coilover not really fitting, I spoke to WiseFab and they basically just said just put a load of washers in to space it out. It's kind of weird, but that's what they said. Um, there was a couple of other bits we had to grind down as well, a bolt that kind of gets in the way of this that we had to grind down. Um, we've not tightened all this stuff up yet. Some of it's really awkward to get to. This bolt on the top is extremely awkward to get to and when it's like when the suspension is compressed it very nearly hits the chassis up there. It's literally like two millimeters in it. So yeah, there's quite a few weird things and stuff that we might have to sort of tweak as we go along. But for now, at least, the majority of the Wisefab stuff is done. We've got all the back stuff done. Um, the diff is back on. We've got all the solid mounts and everything done. Uh, we've finished tidying up a few bits around here. Well, we haven't quite finished. As you can see, there's some studs sticking out. But yeah, we've got most of it done now. So the things that are left to do are the hydro. Actually, let's have a look at the, the list. There's a lot of things left to do. We've got, we've got loads of stuff left to do still, and then bits on the 350 as well. So it's now a few days later, and these wheels have just turned up, just had tyres put on them. As you can see, we've actually gone for some work wheels for once. Um, I did want to get rotors, as always, but they didn't have any in the size that I needed, so had to uh, slum it and get some works. You know how it is. And uh, yeah, this should help with the poke issue a bit. It's not going to solve it completely, but this should knock about 40 mil of poke off the current setup um, because at the moment we've got like 60 65 mil of poke which is ridiculous um, which is why these are like really flat non-concaved wheels I know people aren't so keen on them but I'm just trying to get rid of as much poke as possible and these small wheels they're like seven or seven and a half inches in um, with a pretty high offset that is exactly what I want so let's go put them on the car see how it looks there we go doesn't that look better We've got a little bit of poke. Obviously the wheels are slightly turned at the moment as well. This doesn't give you the best idea. We've got a little bit of poke, but not a ridiculous amount. It's, it's acceptable. The only slight issue we've got now is this is super, super close to the caliper. Like I can't even fit my finger in there at all. Um, but it doesn't touch, so that should be okay. But the other thing is, you can't see under here. I'll flash up a picture um, of how close the tire is to the front of the knuckle. Because these are like really square tires, like there's quite a sort of bulge outwards. So it's this sort of ridge here that's like nearly touching on the back. So I might have to just stick like a five mil spacer or something on, which obviously would be a shame to be adding a tiny bit more poke when we're trying to get rid of it. But if that stops it from uh, contacting the tire on the back of the knuckle, then that's worth doing. So yeah, there you go. Uh, we'll probably play around with the ride height and stuff in future. This is just kind of randomly where we happen to get it to so that we could move the car around. But to be fair, that's probably about where I'd have it anyway. I'm not about that low life, as I'm sure you guys know. But yeah, that's it for this video. Again, sorry it's been kind of all over the place and just not really filming that much, but did I show you we got the polycarb windows done? I can't remember if I did. I've still got loads of stuff to do in here. Still got to finish painting stuff. Um, and yeah, just tons and tons of stuff still to go. So yeah, there'll be more videos coming soon. And I'm currently doing the angle kit on this car as well. And also making some exhaust stuff. So I'll do a video going through all that at some point soon as well. And yeah, we'll see you there.